Hello and God bless you guys. Today is October the 8th of 2024. My name is William Brooks. My website is eyesupandopen.org. My YouTube channel is Spirit of Prophecy. Um, all of my prophetic messages are cataloged in the little book, which is also the Everlasting Gospel. The little book of Revelation chapter 10, which is also the Everlasting Gospel of chapter 14 which the Lord has revealed this one, this message I'm about to read. I do a prophetic message today, and I will add it to the back of the little book, and you guys are welcome to re-download it. Um, I would encourage you guys to do that anyway, and um, the reason why is uh, it's a purification process on these messages, and I've never once to this day changed content, topic, or even the structures of the sentences that are in here, meaning that I leave the words intact the way they are giving. But many times there's spelling errors, and the Lord will lead me to perhaps choose a different synonym. We're talking really fine-tuned things here at this point. And for the most part, many of you won't even notice the changes that are in there, but I would encourage you to download it again just to have the, 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 the freshest copy, so to speak. And um, the links will be... Once again, in the description of this video, um, perhaps some of you guys have reached out to me. I know I email back and forth and chat with quite a few people. Um, if I have not gotten back to you, which I think I've got back to everybody at this point, but if I haven't, just understand that um, lately I've spent a lot of time with my family and um, just sort of rebuilding my family as the Lord leads and spent a lot of time in Scripture with them and just enjoying life. And that's just something the Lord gave here in these past few weeks that I've greatly enjoyed and has been a real blessing. And so I'm doing very well. Um, I do have my struggles, obviously, just like anybody else. But overall, um, life is good, and we're moving on with the things of God in spite of uh, persecutions and trials and tribulations that come our way. And so my heart goes out to those who have been victimized by these disasters lately in our country and even around the world and the wars that are happening. We know all these things are coming, but love people anyway. It's not up to us to judge them down or to say they deserve it or anything of that nature. Uh, just continue to love and pray and serve people and um, show those you come across the love of Christ and the power of God that's in you. And Continue to follow the Lord and let him lead you step by step. And I certainly love you guys. And um, I'll just go ahead and get started. I'll go ahead and start reading the message that I have for today and just to get this cracking here. And... Today's message is called, Come Fully to Your Everlasting Lord. Hear, hear, hear the voice of your Lord, and hear the words of Yeshua HaMashiach, and bow your hearts in obedience to the will of your Lord, and allow my words to comfort your souls. And so I will ask you a question. Are you listening? When the Son of Man comes, will I find faith on the earth? Truly, truly. I will find faith amongst my faithful, that I will take away to the safety of the heavens for their faithfulness. But the vast majority of those on the earth are faithless. And so I continue to warn you, my loves, to depart from the sins of sinners and come out from amongst their ways and be ye separate, lest you partake of their judgments. Yet so it is that so many people disingenuously Draw near to me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, and I will say to them, Depart from me, I never knew you. Understand that it is not enough to declare me Lord from a faithless heart, but those who truly make me Lord are those who repent of and cease from their sins and seek to live righteously before me. Know ye not that I, Jesus the Nazarene, would rather have your entire heart and love and commitment over the sacrifices of your lips? Yes, I would have mercy and not sacrifice. For in part, it is through my mercy, the withholding of deserved wrath, that my love is shown even the love of Yahweh, the great eternal God. Yet my words of warning are heeded by those who love me 
and have responded in repentance to my love for them, as I have revealed myself to them for their salvation. And so it is, my love, is received amongst those whose hearts are soft to my voice, and indeed to all those who love me and of whom I have instructed to learn of me, even those who I lead in my ways of salvation. Why do you let your hearts trouble you, my little ones? Have not my apostles and prophets warned against this day since the dawn of the age? Have not the prophets of old foretold of Daniel's 70th week, coming in great judgment on the earth? Therefore, understand, you live in the days just before Jacob's trouble breaks fully across the earth, and of these days... Many calamities, signs, miracles, wonders, and even judgments have been foretold and are now unleashed. So why do you marvel? These are the final warnings on a smaller scale of what is to come over the entire earth when my faithful are departed to me in the heavens from the earth as I gather them together as calves of the stall and they will find absolute safety and fulfillment as they stand in their first moments born again into all eternity, where they will never perish, nor suffer, nor endure sickness, but will have perfect joy and perfect harmony with Yahweh, and indeed me, Yeshua HaMashiach, and great reward and inheritance will I give them, for I have their reward in my mighty hand. So many of my faithful have become leavened by false doctrines from the prosperity gospel that is erroneously preached by false prophets and teachers who lie to my people, telling them that calamity will never touch them as long as they think happy thoughts. These wells without water preach another Jesus, and they do not know me, Yeshua HaMashiach, and neither have I sent them. Always compare the words of those who claim to speak for me to Scripture. And where they contradict Scripture is where they speak from their own hearts for their own greedy gain. Truly, truly, there are many false ministers who have sown lies amongst my congregations. And the false prosperity gospel leads to the wide way of destruction, where the gates of hell will open wide to those who follow to that ever-burning lake of fire, burning the hottest flames of cobalt blue, prepared for, the fallen, prepared for the fallen ones and those who follow them. So do not fall for their lies. I do not speak of my faithful prophets who perhaps misspeak a word for me, nor the ones who make an honest mistake and correct themselves. Understand that none of my prophets prophesy in full, but all of my prophets prophesy in part, and they will never contradict Scripture when they truly speak for me, Christ Jesus, because I am the Word of God made flesh who dwells among you, though after the flesh I am known no more. My little ones, be not deceived, because always in this world there is persecution and anguish, especially now at the end of Satan's kingdom, as the fallen ones come into judgment and as they prepare to do what they are allowed to accomplish in their judgment, because even the enemies of Yahweh obey his voice. Have you not read in Romans where I instructed Paul in my ways? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
And so my chosen have always suffered many things for my name's sake. And there has been a huge multitude of martyrs in my age of grace who have given their lives in service and furtherance of the gospel of salvation, even the very gospel that has saved your souls by faith in Jesus the Nazarene, because in part it was through the work of my martyrs the gospel of salvation saturated the earth. Yet many of you have been leavened by the leaven of various name it and claim it false doctrines that have saturated my Laodicean church. These evil doctrines are not of me, and your thoughts do not accomplish anything outside of yourselves unless you speak my words on lips of faith when I grant signs, miracles, and wonders to be done by your hands. So you cannot imagine yourselves out of distresses and persecution nor are my call, chosen, and faithful exempt from calamity. Wherever in the word of God does it say that whosoever believes on me will never suffer tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. On the contrary, some or, or even all of these are guaranteed to all who live faithfully for me. And so I counsel you to repudiate their words because their words are cleverly devised fables sent by the fallen ones to overthrow the very faith of the elect should such a thing be possible. However, understand that all of my faithful ones who follow me with their entire heart are saved from the wrath of the Lamb and the wrath of God, and they will be taken to safety in the throne room of Yahweh before judgment fully falls on the earth. And so it is, my children, that many of you will suffer various calamities and persecutions brought about by the fallen ones, and many will lose this world's gain in this finality before I gather my faithful. With each passing second, my appearing is that much closer. So I encourage you, my loves, to stand for me and hold fast to my love as your motivating force to endure what is needed for you to bring salvation to the lost as you lead them onto the ark before calamity strikes? Understand what I gave Paul to write to the Colossians. Now I rejoice in my sufferings which I suffer for you and fulfill that which is behind of the passion of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the congregation whereof I am made a minister according to the ordinance of God which ordinance was given me to you to fulfill the word of God. So it is, my loves, that when you suffer for my name's sake, that you continue in and partake of my sufferings that I endured on Calvary, while I left nothing undone in your salvation, and I am the complete and perfect Passover for all time. I have called each of you to endure many things for my name's sake, so count it all joy. And know, my children, that I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So run, run that you may obtain. For God is not unrighteous that he should forget your work and labor of love, which you show towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints, and yet minister. So many of you have been led astray in your expectations, that you no longer realize that many times my call, chosen, and faithful, willingly endure hardships, humiliation, loss, and much, much more, and the end result of their endurance and the sufferings of Christ is salvation to the lost and great reward and recompense for those who fact sacraments. I'm going to start that sentence over. I mangled that one pretty good. Start from the beginning of the paragraph here. So many of you who have been led astray in your expectations that you no longer realize that many times my call, chosen, and faithful willingly endure hardships, humiliation, loss, and much, much more, and the end result of their endurance and the sufferings of Christ is salvation to the lost 
and great reward and recompense for those who sacrifice in themselves in such manner. Have you not read in Acts where Paul and Silas endured much hardship in Macedonia, be being beaten severely and unjustly cast into prison and made fast in the stocks at Philippi? Yet I sent an earthquake to deliver them out of their bonds, and so the Philippian jailer and his household achieved salvation through the endurance of Paul and Silas. And for many of those who follow me, they will endure hardships and persecution and tribulation. But in all of these things, you are more than conquerors, and I do fight for you, my children. If you but remain obedient to my voice and follow my will with your entire heart, and I will cause you to overcome all things, if you but remain faithful to my voice and allow me to direct your steps, for your salvation is in obedience to your everlasting Savior. And so I counsel you, my loves, to stand for me and give my love to a dying and convicted world that stands in chains as judgment is about to fully fall. Will you allow me to help you overcome discouragement so that you hold your hope in mind? Have you forgotten my words, my loves? And now abides faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And so I send you to love the lost, because it is the goodness of God that leads people to repentance many times. Therefore, serve me in your communities. Pray for those who have lost everything, because while they still draw breath, it may be that the loss of this world will cause them to gain all eternity. Preach to the sinners and bring salvation to the lost. And remember, you are my ambassadors, my loves, and fulfill your calling in me and remain steadfast in this finality of times. So I send you to love your neighbors and to provide sustenance and to help those in need. Even a drink of water or a plate of food, give whatever you can to help those who suffer, doubting nothing. And if you happen to suffer alongside the lost, then love them fully and show my testimony and power. And speak for me on lips of believing from a heart filled with faith, hope, and love. And so I ask you, are you afraid to help sinners? Do you not understand that I was sent, that when I was sent not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that I spent my time with publicans and sinners? Have you forgotten that you were once living lives of habitual sin? Have you forgotten that I am the only sinless man, even the Lamb of God? So let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom I have ransomed from the hand of the enemy. Love, love, love until your last breath. For it is better to die serving in the love of Christ than to shrink in fear at the pathetic efforts of the weak and beggarly elements, of which I have overcome fully and given victory to all who make me their everlasting Lord. So love not your lives to the end and follow my example of fearless service in the face of evil and death that have been overcome fully by the everlasting love of the great eternal God, even El Shaddai. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and will sustain you with the right hand of my justice. So come to me, my children, and rest in my love for you, and I will soothe your souls and heal your wounds, and I will strengthen you in your brokenness that you may have to give to those who need you, for so are you sent. Because it is you, my ambassadors, who are not only chosen and called to the glory of my kingdom, but also to suffer for my name's sake. Truly, truly, you are partakers of my sufferings. Only follow my example and faint not in your hour of despair. For I am with you every step of the way, and it is I, the Lord Jesus Christ, who purifies your souls in my refiner's fire, 
Though you are but earthen vessels in the potter's hands, the purifying fires will cause your face to be set like a flint, so that you are unbreakable in my strength, and yet still in the weakness of your flesh. Yet so it is, that in the weakness of sinful flesh is my love perfected in you, as I draw you closer to me and prepare you further for your eternal purposes. Therefore, it is a just thing for the redeemed to suffer for my name's sake, because I gave my entire being an agonizing sacrifice, that you may live before Yahweh, even the great Almighty God. Understand that in your trials and sufferings you are not only bringing my saving grace to those in need, but also working out your own salvation in fear and trembling, that I may bring you to your full reward, and so is your hope about to be realized. Perhaps you have heard of the endurance of Job, how that Job was a faithful man who came to hard times, and who was unjustly attacked by Satan. Perhaps you have heard of the end of Job, because Job was not an unrighteous man who was overcome of evil, but a righteous man who found mercy, who overcame evil with good, by following the words of Yahweh and remaining in righteousness, even in the face of evil persecution. And so Yahweh restored to Job double of all that was unjustly taken from him. And Yahweh recompensed Job for his troubles and persecution. Behold, we count them blessed which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have known what the end, what end the Lord made, for the Lord is very pitiful and merciful. And so remains faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. So understand, my loves, that for the faithful, hope is about to be fully realized, as you are snatched to the safety of the heavens from the coming judgments. Hear my voice and understand my love for you, my called, faithful, and chosen, even my body and even my bride. Therefore, rest in my love, because even in the greatest adversity my love remains strong and unconquerable, because I am one in unity and purpose with my Father, and it is Yahweh's eternal love that I give to all who are heirs of eternal life and all who come to Jesus the Nazarene for salvation. Understand, no man can come to Yahweh except through me, Christ Jesus. And so it is that Yahweh's love is unconquerable, because Yahweh is unconquerable, and therefore I am unconquerable, for I have overcome. And I am the everlasting Lord of salvation, even he whom Yahweh has made Lord of lords and King of kings, and he has given me a name greater than any name, that at the name of Jesus Christ should every knee bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. Understand that the fallen ones fear you, my loves, and great fear grips their heart on account of their impending judgment that lingers not. I commend uh, excuse me, I command and encourage you, my children, to take my love to this sick and dying and judged world in this last time before calamity fully falls. I say to you, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. For he that believes on me the works that I did on earth so too shall he do in greater works indeed, because I have gone to our Father. Walk out in great love and humility, and meet those who are in need with the power of Christ, that I will energize mightily in you. For it is in you, my earthen vessels, that the power of the excellency of God and Christ in you resides. Speak to the problems you face in faith. Have faith in Yahweh and faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, and say to that mountain, Remove and be cast into the sea. And as you do so faithfully, I will grant many signs, miracles, and wonders to be done at the hands of the faithful. Be bold and courageous, for I am the Lion of the tribe of Judah who fights for you. 
I implore you and constrain you by the love of God that is in Christ Jesus your Lord to willingly endure for my name's sake and bring the lost home to our Father even in this last time. I implore you, my chosen, to set the example for you are my faithful and chosen whom I have forged in affliction that in the weakness and brokenness of your flesh you might manifest the power of the great eternal God. Even Yahweh himself, as you go in service, and great authority to those I send you to serve. I am with you every step of the way. I am one in unity and purpose with my Father. I am the everlasting Lord of salvation. I am he whom Yahweh has made Lord of lords and King of kings. I am the Lion of the tribe of Judah who fights for you. I, Yeshua HaMashiach, have sent these words by my servant, and by my servant have my words been sent for the obedience and encouragement of all who these words find. And my words will find the eyes, ears, and hearts of those they are sent. Stand strong, my loves, for your reward is at your doorstep. Only faint not. Rest in my love and rest in my works, having ceased from your own. And now is the time of your redemption. And now is the time of your full salvation. And I am coming for you, my loves. Hear me and hear my words. I will not leave you nor forsake you, my faithful ones in Christ. Even all those who are obedient to my voice, look to the skies, for my appearing is about to break across the skies at a time and hour you least expect. I am coming for you, my faithful. Are you ready? Take these words to the Lord for, I'm just speechless. <laughs> Take these words to the Lord for confirmation and have him confirm in your spirit that they are sent of him. And go doubting nothing. Don't doubt yourselves. When the Lord lays something on your heart, speak it. Speak to the spirit. Speak to the sickness. Speak to this problem. Speak to the broken arm and tell it to men. I have many miracles that the Lord has performed by my hands, and every one of them worked in that exact same way. You speak to the problem. If there's a heart attack, you command it to stop. If it's a blood clot, you command it to move. If it's a spirit, you command it to depart. God bless you guys. Much love.